Hi friends, uh, welcome to Dr. Ram's Medical Coding Academy. Today we are going to see this urogenital system. Before that, it's my humble request that please share this video to your near and dear ones, to students especially who are preparing for this NEET exam. This is an inevitable part of this NEET syllabus, so this would be of tremendous help for students who are aspiring to clear the NEET exam. Let's get started. The urogenital system can be conveniently divided as the urinary system and the genital system. Now here comes the question, why do we have to club the system as urogenital? Because in the male, the urinary tract and the genital or the reproductive tract actually joins as a common passage. So we call it as the urogenital system. Uro refers to the urinary portion and genito refers to generation or birth. So this system is involved with the transportation of urine as well as the transport of the spermatozoon which is found in the semen. Now before talking about the genital system we need to know about the male gonad or the male sex organ which is a testis and the male gamete as a mature spermatozoon simply we call it as the sperm. You need to understand semen and sperm are not synonymous. Sperm or spermatozoon is a mature male gamete or the male cell which is found in the fluid called as a semen. Let's move on to the urinary portion of the system. Here you can remember this way as KUBU. K for kidney, U as ureter, B as bladder and U as urethra. We have a pair of kidneys and they are located retroperitoneally, meaning behind the peritoneum. Each kidney it is a bean shaped organ and which has an outer region called as a renal cortex and the inner region called as renal medulla. Kidney is involved with the formation of urine and this is being assisted by the cells called as nephron. These nephrons are the structural and functional units of the kidney. When there is damage to these nephrons, then the patient ends up with a renal failure. In the medullary region, we have pyramidal structures and at the apex, we have the renal papilla through which the collecting duct releases the urine, which is now being received by a cup-shaped structure called as the calyx. There are two types of calyces. Calyx is singular and calyces as plural. We call it as the major calyx. From the renal papilla, the urine is now being received by the structures called as minor calyces and all these minor calyces opens up into the major calyx. The major calyx then leads to another dilate portion within the kidney called as the pelvis, which we call it as the renal pelvis. The renal pelvis is going to join with a muscular tube called as a ureter. At this point, there is a stricture kind of. So we call this as the PUJ or the pelvic ureteric junction. The importance of this place is that here, whenever there is a smallest stone, the ureter is a muscular tube which helps in the conduction of urine from the renal pelvis to the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder, it is a bag that contains or acts as a reservoir of urine and this has a muscle called as the detrusor muscle. The urine in the urinary bladder now escapes via this urethra. Here you should understand, in the males, there are four parts of the urethra and the male urethra is much longer than the female urethra. We can conveniently divide this urethra as a pre-prostatic urethra, prostatic urethra, membranous urethra and a penile urethra which opens at the tip of the penis in the male. You should understand here that here the urinary system is now going to gel with another system called as the male genital system. The male genital system we can classify as external genitalia and internal genitalia. The external appearance is what we call it as the external genitalia and this is being constituted by the spinous, the urethra and the scrotum. Scrotum is a bag which lodges the testicles. 
So these three structures, penis, urethra and the scrotum, they form the external genitalia. Let's move on to the internal genitalia, more especially with the male gonad which is the testicles. We have a pair of testicles. The testicles are made up of seminiferous tubules and these help in the production of the hormone testosterone. There are two layers within the testis we call it as tunica albuginea and tunica vaginalis. On top of each testis we have the storehouse of the sperm cells called as the epididymis. This acts as a reservoir and the mature sperm cells are stored here. Now the sperm from the epididymis then enters a vas deferens and this vas deferens joins with yet another structure called as a seminal vesicle. The duct from the seminal vesicle and this vas deferens joins to form the ejaculatory duct which then joins with the urethra. It is at this site where the urinary system and the genital system have a common pathway and thereby urine and semen being conducted via the main urethra. There is another important structure called as a prostate gland which surrounds actually the urethra in the main and sometimes the enlargement of which leads to urinary disturbances in the main. Apart from these we also have the cowper's glands which help in the secretion of a lubricating fluid. Let's move on to the medical terms. The kidney is called as nephro in Greek and renal in Latin. For example, if I want to say as an inflammatory condition of kidney, I would say as nephritis. And if it is a failure of the kidney, I would say as renal failure. Ureter as uretero and bladder as cysto or vesico. Inflammation of bladder, we call it as cystitis or vesiculitis. Urethra is called as urethro and the prostate gland is called as prostato. Coming to the genitalia, we can talk about the testis as orchido. The head portion of the penis contains this gland, so we call it as the balano, and the foreskin which is there in the penis, we call it as the posto. Inflammation of the gland's penis, we call it as balanitis, and that of the prepuce or the foreskin as postitis. And if it occurs together, we call it as balanopostitis. The epididymis, we call it as epididymo, and the vaso differentia, we call it as a vaso. The ejaculatory duct helps in the conduct of the semen, and urethra, we call it as urethro. Let's move on to the pathological conditions that involve the urogenital system. First thing is nephrolithiasis. Please break this term nephro plus litho plus iasis. Nephro refers to kidney, litho or stone and iasis refers to the condition. It refers to the condition of formation of kidney stones or otherwise we call it as a renal calculus. BPH is the abbreviation for benign prostatic hyperplasia in which there is benign enlargement of the prostate gland. Cystitis is the inflammation of the urinary bladder and orchitis is the inflammation of the testis. Orchitis can occur as a complication of varicella infection which is a chickenpox infection. Phimosis is a condition in which the foreskin is unable to be retracted for which the surgeon performs circumcision. On the urinary aspect, we have this ESRD, which is the end stage renal disease, or otherwise, it is a stage 6 of this chronic kidney disease, we say as CKD6 or as ESRD. Azoospermia is a condition in which there is complete absence of mature spermatozoans in the semen, and this could also be a cause for sterility in the male. Let's move on to the common procedures that are involved with the urogenital system. Of late, we find that there is a revolution in the urinary procedures and we call them as the trans urethral surgeries. The surgeries are being performed via the urethra. We call them as the trans urethral procedures. For example, if the patient is having a BPH, they can very well perform a TURP, which is a trans urethral resection of prostate 
and if there is any tumor in the bladder the resection procedure we call it as transurethral resection of bladder tumors insertion of the kidney we call it as nephrotomy and suture repair of the urethra as urethrography removal of this prostate we also call it as a prostatectomy and visualization of this urinary bladder we call it as cystoscopy which includes the visualization of the urethra so we also call it as cystourethroscopy let's move on to the reproductive procedures that are being done on a male patient we have hydrocelectomy here hydrocele is a collection of fluid in the tunica vaginalis excision of this hydrocele sac we call it as hydrocelectomy the sterilization in a male patient we call it as vasectomy the vas deferens is being excised and this is a male operative procedure or we call it as the family planning operation in a male patient in conditions like abnormal descent of the testes or conditions like cryptorchidism say a hidden testes the surgeons perform an operation called as orchidopexy pexy refers to fixation and orchidopexy as a surgical fixation of the testes let's move on to the coding aspect of these urogenital procedures the urogenital conditions are being classified under the icd 10 cm and all these codes start with this alphabet as yan the surgical section of the cpt manual enlists the procedures as a 50000 series for procedures that are being done on the main urinary system as well as a genital system let's quickly have this coding scenario at a glance in which mani had bilateral renal calculi for which he is being transferred to the lithotripsy unit series word as lithotripsy litho as stone and tripsy means to crush or to fragment it it is a crushing of the renal calculus so we call it as a lithotripsy the patient is being moved to the lithotripsy unit and shocks are being provided let's code this scenario you should see the condition here which is a bilateral renal calculus accordingly you will have to select the code as yan 20.0 in case if it is a unspecified site then you will have to report the code accordingly the cpt code that you can select is 50590 as always i hope this session would be very useful to you and if you have any queries please reach out to dr rams academy we are also providing this online and direct classroom sessions daily and this goes for like one and a half months if you are interested please reach out to us Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any queries, please reach out to us and I will see you in the next session. Till then, take care. You can contact us at 805-60855-96996279107